It was supposed to be the quiet end of an era. Drones were taking over, bombers were stealing headlines, and the age of manned fighters looked like it was fading out. Then, out of nowhere, Boeing secured the Air Force's next generation air dominance fighter contract. The Jet Insiders are already nicknaming the F-47. A multi-billion dollar decision and a comeback nobody saw coming. If this program delivers what's rumored, it won't just revive Boeing. It could rewrite the future of air combat. For months, speculation swirled. Would America really double down on a sixth generation manned fighter? while the rest of the world poured resources into unmanned swarms and autonomous strike systems? Conventional wisdom said no. Reality just said yes. This is the story of a fallen giant turning into the most dangerous contender in the sky, and the unanswered questions that could make or break that comeback. Where dominance isn't a slogan, it's the oxygen a modern military breathes. When you control the sky, everything beneath it gets easier. Reconnaissance becomes clearer, strike packages get safer, and deterrence starts working before the first jet even leaves the runway. That's what this program is about. A fighter designed for the decade ahead, built to survive in the dirtiest airspace on Earth. Sensor jammed, missile saturated, and crawling with enemy drones. If it works, it won't just outfly threats, it'll outthink them. But high stakes cut both ways. A program this ambitious can create legends, or sink reputations. That tension is exactly why the next chapter hits so hard. Transition. If the mission is this big, why did so many people doubt Boeing could carry it? Boeing didn't stroll into this award with a spotless resume. The last few years were brutal. High profile commercial issues, bruised public trust, and constant questions about execution. For critics, a next-gen fighter sounded like too much, too fast. And yet, behind the headlines sits a defense lineage that never truly died. Between the deep bench of engineers and the DNA of legendary fighters, the company still had the tools. If it could prove, it still had the timing. That's why this award isn't routine procurement. It's a referendum. Win here, and Boeing doesn't just build a jet. It rebuilds its reputation one test flight at a time. Transition, so what exactly did Boeing just win? And why does it matter now? The Air Force chose Boeing to lead America's next leap in air combat, a sixth generation platform designed to dominate highly contested airspace. Think, deeper stealth, smarter sensors, and plug and play adaptability for threats no one has named yet. That single decision resets the competitive map. It splits risk, spreads innovation, and forces every player, friend and rival, to rethink their timelines. And while the internet loves a conspiracy, the simplest explanation is often the truest. Capability, team, and a plan that convinced decision makers this jet can actually be built. But an award is not a rollout. It's a promise with a deadline. Transition. If the selection is done, the real question becomes, what is this jet? Strip away the hype and you'll hear the same three themes again and again. Stealth you can service. Stealth is useless if the jet can't fly often. Expect coatings, shapes, and materials designed not only to hide, but to survive daily ops in real squadrons. A brain with wings. Sixth gen isn't just an airframe. It's a sensor fusion node that hoovers up chaos and turns it into targeting clarity. Fast enough to matter. Team tactics by design. The platform is built to quarterback loyal wingman drones, hand off targets, bait defenses, and flood the battle space with dilemmas the enemy can't solve in time. Will it outsneak an F-35 and outpunch an F-22? That's the expectation. The smarter framing is this. It must outcycle the enemy's decision making. If the jet can do that, the silhouette almost doesn't matter. Transition. Great on paper, but credibility is earned in lineage and flight hours. Does Boeing have that? Programs don't happen in a vacuum. They stand on shoulders. Boeing's defense arm, fused with the legacy of McDonnell Douglas, still carries the muscle memory of the F-15 and the F-A-18, airframes that proved you can iterate, modernize, and win across decades. That matters for two reasons. 
First, sustainment. Building a jet is one thing. Keeping it lethal for 30 years is another. Second, culture. Teams that have lived through real flight test scars write better checklists and catch uglier problems earlier. Lineage isn't a trophy on the wall. It's the difference between an elegant prototype and a warplane that shows up ready on Tuesday at 0600. Transition. If the pedigree checks out, why is the commentary still so loud? Every major award triggers the same chorus. It's political. It's risk balancing. It'll slip years. Some of that skepticism is healthy. Big programs deserve big scrutiny. Budgets are finite, and the last thing warfighters need is a paper airplane that's perfect on PowerPoint. But there's also a brutal reality to deterrence. Not deciding is a decision. Adversaries iterate fast. If you want to keep pacing them, somebody has to pick a design, lock a schedule, and start cutting metal. The Air Force just did. So yes, cost growth is a risk. Timelines are a risk. Integration is a risk. That's why this award exists. To place a bet early enough to learn, fix, and field before the threat graph outpaces the calendar. Transition. Speaking of threat graphs, what happens outside US borders now? In Europe and the Pacific, allies just got a loud signal. The US isn't ceding manned air dominance, it's doubling down and planning to network it with unmanned systems. That clarifies procurement for partner nations and accelerates joint concepts of operation. Adversaries see the same signal and read it differently. Their timeline just shortened. Expect more counter-stealth investment, more long-range air defenses, more electronic warfare experiments, and more disinformation to muddy the waters around the program. The quiet takeaway. A jet like this is not a solo statement. It's a framework. It shapes tactics, logistics, training pipelines, export policies, and how you fight on night two when the enemy adapts. Transition. With the world watching, only one question matters now. Ops tempo. Over vanity metrics. If this jet can't fly often, it can't win. Build for maintainability from day one. Coatings, access panels, parts commonality, and software updates that don't ground fleets for months. Open systems for closed timelines. The threat won't wait for your block upgrade. Architect the jet so sensors, EW, and weapons can be swapped like smartphone modules. If an algorithm beats a missile this year, fly the algorithm. Now, not in 2029. Human machine teaming. That's boring. In a good way, pilots need trust, not novelty. Loyal wingman control has to feel like second nature under G's and radio chaos. If that UI is clunky, the concept dies in the cockpit. Nail those three, and you don't just field a fighter, you field a future. Transition. And that brings us to the only ending a program like this deserves. Boeing's win isn't a victory lap. It's a starting gun. The mission is bigger than a logo on a tail. Build a jet that bends the enemy's decision loop until it breaks. If the team hits its marks, on stealth you can service, brains you can trust, and teaming you can scale, then the era of the manned fighter isn't ending. It's evolving. And if they miss, the future will move on without them. Subscribe to stay on this story. The next time we talk about this jet, I won't be guessing. I'll be breaking down what we finally see and what that means for the wars we hope never happen.